I just created and published my very first Fortnite map, and in this video I want to show you how I made it and hopefully this could inspire you to also get started creating islands for Fortnite or just get started with game development in general. I have always been a gamer. I remember my first console being the 8-bit Nintendo and the game was Super Mario. From there I have gone through a lot of different console and PC games over the years. I especially remember playing Quake 2 on LAN with my friends when I was a teenager. Today I'm a 37 year old father of two sons, and seeing them grow up and start playing their first games is a very special feeling. The latest game that I play the most right now is Fortnite. At first I was a bit skeptical to trying it out, but after seeing my 9 year old son playing it, it looked kinda fun. So I gave it a shot and fell in love right away. The graphics, the gameplay and all the fun skin and emotes and the skills necessary to become good at it got me hooked. Since I work in IT and I have gaming as a hobby, I have always wanted to build my own games. A few years back I found out about the Unreal Engine and started playing with it. I looked up a lot of tutorials on YouTube about Unreal Engine and how to use it and it was so much fun. Over the last couple of years I have been working on and off in the engine creating a few small projects that sadly have never been finished, but I see them all as learning materials that will someday help me build something great. With the release of UEFN I thought that maybe I could create my own Fortnite map and have my son and his friends as playtesters. That's when I decided I want to make a capture the flag style Fortnite island with inspiration from my old Quake 2 LMCTF days. My plan is to make a map that is fun to play with two bases, one for each team to spawn from and which holds their flag. The map should be mirrored from the center to not give any team any advantages. The goal should be for the teams to fight their way into the opposing team's base and capture their flag and bring it home to their own base to capture it and score a point, while they at the same time should stop the other team from stealing their flag. If possible I would also like to add some power-ups or extra abilities that the team can fight for. Capture the flag have always been a fun game mode for me that I have seen a lot of games implement. From my research I have also found out that Fortnite have pre-built functionality to create CTF islands so this project should not be too hard to finish. Quake 2 LMCTF was the first Capture the Flag mod ever released for Quake 2, created by German Guard of Clan Loki's Minions. It quickly became popular and I have played it for many years growing up. The things I remember the most from it was the sound effects, the hook you could use to navigate quickly around the map, the intense fights when you met an opponent and a great feeling when you managed to capture the flag. This fast paced gameplay is something I would like to replicate in Fortnite using UEFN. Hopefully I will also be able to implement features like the runes or artifacts from Quake that are basically power-ups that you could find around the map and pick up which gives you extra abilities, such as strength, shield, haste and regen. I would also like to implement the quad damage, a timed pickup that would give the player that first collected extreme power and the ability to just slay any opponent they came across. I also hope that I can import and use some of my own sounds in the game, or possibly even some of the old sounds from Quake, if that's legally possible. I will have to look that up. Unreal Editor for Fortnite is basically the Unreal Engine game development engine, but specifically built for creating Fortnite content. The look and feel of UEFN is very similar to Unreal Engine and it makes it very easy to build and release games for Fortnite. Using UEFN for this project is a no-brainer. It's literally designed just to do exactly what I want to do, so there's no need to look for any other tools or game engines. So what do I need for this project? Creating content with Unreal Engine or UEFN requires a pretty good gaming PC that will be able to handle the workload and that meets the minimum hardware requirements. I will be using my desktop PC with the following specs. I will be using my own Fortnite account, which is free to create over at epicgames.com. I will also need to download UEFN, which is free to download from the Epic Games Launcher. It is also recommended to have a fast internet connection to be able to download everything needed, and also to upload the final results. Before starting I will probably have to freshen up my skills in UEFN by taking a look at the documentation. I will also go through some YouTube tutorials and learn more about the features I will need to use. First I created a rough sketch of the map in paint to quickly find a design that I liked. Then I opened up UEFN and created a new black project and started building. Since UEFN come with so many assets it can be difficult to find the style that you like, but 
but after a long time browsing I found some materials that I want to use. One thing I really like is the ability to quickly jump into the game and playtest the map. It helped me to get a feeling of how the map will look and to figure out the scale of the rooms I was building. As I mentioned earlier, the map design should be identical for both teams until they meet in the middle, so no team have any advantages depending on which team they spawn into. I would like it to have a main route from one side to the other, but also a few smaller paths that could be taken that could be useful when coming up with good strategies on how to get the flag from one side to the other, depending on where the fighting are taking place. It should also be clear on which side of the map you are on, using different colored objects to represent the different team's home base. I will probably go with red and blue, we'll see. The next stage of building the map is really fun. When the walls and ceilings start to come into place, it really brings life to everything. I also started playing with the team's color and banners. I added these stairs to give the players options, both in ways in and out of the base, but also to have different fighting positions. After trying out a few different designs for the roof, I found one that I liked. I wanted to keep the roof open to let the sunlight in so the map doesn't feel too dark. Then I made a copy of the roof over to the next section of the map. I also found this fan that I thought could be a fun thing to add. The next thing I started working on was adding lights to some of the darker areas. I also added a few more windows to let in more light. Next I started working on the big center area of the map. Next I added two balconies to the center area where I'm planning to put some weapons and power-ups. In each corner I put an ascender for faster access. When the first half of the map was done, I created a copy and put it on the other side. I added this area on top only so I can put down some different decorations. Each team will consist of 6 players. To control the team settings you can use the team settings and inventory device. With it you can change the team name, their color and much more. Here I created 2 teams, red and blue, and I also put out 6 player spawners for the red team. 
To turn this into a capture the flag game you need a capture item spawner that will spawn the flag and then later a capture area which is the area you should return the flag to to score your points. I put the capture area right on top of the item spawner so you can capture the flag and return it in the same location. Then I also set up the same devices for the red team. When I was playing around with the settings I noticed that you can control the lights based on if the flags are captured or not. So in this example you will see that when the flag has been captured the lights will turn off. And when I drop the flag and it returns to the item spawner it's going to turn on the lights again. I used two different HUD message devices to show a text on the screen when the flag has been captured. I used the temporary button just to test out this function. I put down a few more walls to give the players a more cover to hide behind. I really like these containers and wanted to use them to build some more covers. The audio player devices can be used to play any sound that you want. Red flag captured. Red flag return. Here I used it to play different sounds when the flags were captured, returned, or taken by the enemy. Capture the enemy's flag and bring it back to your base. New team scored. I also created sounds for when each round is starting. Round one. The sounds were created by a text-to-speech AI that I found online. Capture the enemy's flag and bring it back to your base. Whenever I found an area of the map that felt empty, I just tried to place down some different assets and see which could fit. The landscaping tool in UEFN is a very quick and powerful tool to use when you want to modify the landscape of the map. Using it you can raise or lower the ground to make it look more interesting. In this case I wanted the map to be surrounded by hills so that when the player looked out of the windows or above the walls there should not just be a flat area that continues all the way to the horizon. Next I thought it was a good idea to add ammo boxes and chests to the map to give the players possibility to find more weapons and items than the one I have manually placed around the map.
I also had the idea to build a small hospital area where the players can pick up health and shield items. When I placed out the ammo boxes and chests I couldn't really find any way to control which items they spawn, but uh, perhaps there is some settings for this, maybe I just missed it. As I mentioned previously, I really wanted to add different power-ups to the game, like the ones found in Quake. I was thinking about a health power-up that would give extra health, maybe from the default 100 to 200 and 200 shield when picked up. And a regen power-up that would regenerate your health and shield slowly over time. A damage power-up that would increase the damage you deal while attacking the enemies. And lastly a speed power-up that both increases your speed and also removes the sprinting limit so you can run fast for unlimited time. This was however not the easiest task to complete. I looked at a lot of YouTube tutorials and read forum posts to find information about how to do it but I just kept failing as the result was not what I was expecting. But after a while I started making some progress. After following a few different tutorials I ended up with a system where the power-ups would be dropped at the player location after eliminating an enemy as you can see in this example. I also tried using item spawners to spawn the power-ups, this way I can put them on random locations throughout the map. Here you can see the regen effect. If you drop the power-up from your inventory all the effects from it should be removed. 
While I was testing I used an acorn as a placeholder, but after a while I found these different mineral bottles with different colors that I thought could be a good fit for the different power-ups. As you can see here, the regen effect works fine and when I drop it, everything stops. But the problem is when I try to pick it up a second time, nothing happens. The plan is that when a player carrying a power-up is eliminated, the power-up should be dropped at that location so another player can pick it up. This way, only four power-ups, one of each, will be spawned into the game and everyone have to fight for them. After playing around with the settings I finally found a way to make it work and now picking up a dropped power up the region effect works as intended. When the power up was done I moved it to the center area and added some text to it. To test the region effect I added some agents to simulate some real gameplay. It turns out their aim is even worse than stormtroopers. After a while they finally managed to eliminate me and I can now see if the power up has been dropped as planned. And there it was, just as I hoped. Now you can see the regen effect is activated. Now that I had all the settings in place I could easily create the other power ups by just modifying the effect they should give the player. At this time I felt that I wanted to remove the damage amplifier in the center of the map, the one that was supposed to be like the quad damage from Quake, as I already had another damage amplifier power-up. I also moved all the four power-ups into one single item spawner, which was set to spawn them in random order and only spawn each power-up once, so there could be no more than four of them in each game. I could now remove all the old item spawners and the text that was associated with them and then I moved the new item spawner up to the center area of the map. When I first created the two teams I used a banner that was named Llama and gave them a blue and red color. The names also became blue llamas and red llamas, but I didn't like the banner so I switched them out for a wolf banner for the blue team and a viking banner for the red team. I looked up how to use the decal device and started placing a few of them around the map. I 
I also placed down a mod bench and a few target dummies in each team's base to fill out the empty space. A problem I found while playtesting was that if you found a shockwave grenade in any of the chests you could easily shoot yourself over the walls and escape the map in a way that was not allowed. To solve this I placed barrier devices over the walls to stop the player from leaving the map. It took me a while to figure out how to make the barrier devices invisible. But then I found out you can just clear the material being used and then it turns invisible. The map is starting to look finished, but I still want to add some more details to it. So I flattened down this hill and placed one of the prefab buildings on top of it. I'm happy with the results and I think it looks kind of nice from down here. At this stage I asked my son to playtest the map and he said I should add some more weapons to the item spawners and a few more chests around the map. I also played around with a few map markers, but since the map is already so small, I didn't think it was necessary to keep them. I want to give players XP while playing my map, and I thought that capturing the flag would be a good location to use the first accolade device. The second option to earn XP is to shoot at the dummy targets in the team's home base. Round one. I didn't really like the bottles anymore used for the power-up items, so I switched them to these different stones. Adding a few more finishing touches here and there and then the map is done.
Before you can publish your map, you need to enroll in the Fortnite Creator Portal. To do this, you need to pass all the checks to see if you are eligible to join the program. Your account has to be older than 30 days and you have to work in Fortnite Creative, UEFN or Unreal Engine at least 7 days or spend $73 on Fortnite in-game products. You also need to be an adult and live in the country and use a payout system that is supported by Epic. When you pass all the checks you can join the program, then you just follow all the steps to get started. There is a lot of required reading to do and especially the tax report can take some time to get through, as it is very important that you get all the information right. I won't cover the whole process here as there are already other videos on YouTube that can help you give a more detailed explanation if you need any help. When your creator portal profile is all set up you can begin to publish your map by uploading it from UEFN and then fill out the map information as game title description and upload thumbnail images and other information in the creator portal. As you can see here, this is my second time publishing the map as I failed to fill in the age rating questionnaire correctly the first time and it got denied for publishing. The review process normally takes a few hours to complete and when it's done you can find your map inside of Fortnite. After publishing the map I found a couple of bugs that I had to fix. First there was an issue where the player items got reset every time after eliminating a player. This was a bug in my configuration where I had set up an item spawner to grant the players their initial loadout from the player spawners. The problem was that every time any player got spawned from one of the 12 spawn pads all players inventory got reset back to the initial loadout. The second bug was that no matter which team managed to capture the flag, both teams were awarded XP, which was not the way I had it planned. I also noticed that the team balancing was not working correctly. I once got in a game where we were three players left in the same team and no one in the other team, after a few players had left the game. Since there was no team balancing during the round and no way to manually switch team, there was nothing we could do but leave the game. So I added a team switcher portal in each team base so you can choose if you want to switch the team. Capture the enemy's flag and bring it back to your base. On the first day of publishing my map got around 200 active players. After that it slowed down for a couple of days and then over 2 days I got more than 1000 active players. It was a good first week but since then it has slowed down to maybe around 10 active players per day. From publish to today more than 30,000 XP activations have been made, mostly from the target dummies but also from players capturing the flags. I really enjoyed the process of creating my first Fortnite map. At the moment I don't really have any good ideas for another map, but I will definitely keep creating more content for Fortnite and I will take all the lessons learned from this one with me to help me build an even better map in the future. If you would like to test my map you can find the code at the beginning of the video and also in the description here on YouTube. If you ever want to play together with me or just want to share your thoughts about this project, please leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching all the way to the end and I hope that this have inspired you to go and make your own Fortnite map in UEFN someday.